Mr. Edwards, character change. Both of you have had controversial past and both of you say you have changed. What fact or factors have caused you to change? Well, first, I'm getting older. I'm 64 years old. I've matured. I've made mistakes and I've learned from them. I, I like to believe I'm a wiser person. Another thing, too, is I faced the decline in years of my life, and I recognize how long eternity is and what a record is and what history will do. I'm very concerned about leaving a better uh, a record for, for historians and for the people of this state. I want an opportunity to show what I can do as I did in the good years when I was governor between 1972 and 1980. I would have been able to do that in, in the last term if the economy had not been so bad and I had not been taken away from my job. You know, we're asking people to take us on faith. We both have uh, problems in our past, and I understand that. Uh, to the extent that my problems are involved, I've asked for forgiveness and an understanding by people in the hope that they will say, all right, that's behind us. Now, which of these two men can best lead us? Which can work with the legislature the best? I was in the legislature. I was governor for 12 years. I worked with the legislature. I worked with industrialists. I worked with poor people. I worked with disabled people. I worked with the educators. And I'm very proud of the support that I have from those in the education department who know that I'm a good governor for education and I'm proud for those in law enforcement that are supporting me because they know my record is good insofar as crime prevention is concerned. All right, a response now from Mr. Duke. A lot of things have gone into my change over the years. You know, I've gotten older as well. I've seen people, learned about people, and we, as we get older, I guess we become more moderate. The thing that really has affected me more than anything else, though, has been my relationship with Christ. I'm a Christian, and I believe that through Christ, all of us become more loving, and all of us start to see things in a different way than we saw them before. And that's really the, what's made the difference in my life. And I want to take a moment of my time to comment, Mr. Edwards, I've never said that we should take elderly and the sick off the welfare rolls. What I'm saying to you is that the people who are abusing the welfare system, and the elderly and the sick the people who've contributed to our system for so long, who've worked so hard and paid taxes, they're not getting what they need. I know of a lady in her 80s who worked 40 years, was retired in $378 a month. She can't turn her heater on sometime in the winter. And yet we have a welfare system that encourages illegitimacy, encourages people not to work, allows people to take welfare money and use it for lottery tickets, allows people to take welfare money and use it for drugs. We've got to clean up the system and get the money to the people who really need it in our society. And that is the elderly and the sick and the hand. All right, a question now from Signora Thomas to Mr. Duke. Mr. Duke, both of you have elements among your supporters who have been emotionally stirred by some of the racial overtones in this campaign. No matter who wins this election, what will you do to try the, to heal the divisions that have been caused because of this campaign? What I will do is I'll, I'll state and speak to the people of Louisiana and say the time is for, has come for everyone in this state to work together. And that means that we solve the problems we have together. We all have problems, black and white. Crime afflicts the black community as much as it does the white community. Drugs afflict that community. Educational problems. Wasted tax money afflicts them. Government, cor government corruption afflicts them. All of us have been treated like pawns and forced busing in these social engineering programs. We need to work together. We need to stand together. I've not tried. I know I've been opposed to affirmative action, but I've not waged a racially oriented campaign. I've never made a specific appeal and said, white people, vote for me because of who I am. Edwin Edwards has gone to the black community and said specifically, blacks should vote for me because of who I am and what I stand for. I didn't organize a voter registration drive in white areas. He organized and helped organize a voter registration drive in particular racial areas because of the partisan vote that's produced. That's divisive. I'm tired of the divisiveness. I believe in equal rights for all. That's what I'm working for. I think affirmative action is a program of racial discrimination that needs to be ended. We've got to start working for excellence and quality. And I hope that James Meredith, who was a civil rights leader, is also an example to the people of this state. Because James Meredith believes that the social welfare system we now have is producing tension, is producing crime, is producing illegitimacy. It's harming everyone, black and white. And I'll work to change the conditions so we can live in peace and harmony again together.
Thank you. Your response, Mr. Edwards. Boy, you're going to lose your newfound religion if you don't quit lying. Uh, you didn't vote for every teacher pay raise. There was only one vote for teacher pay raise. It was in the Children's First Act in 1988 before you got to the legislature. And after you got there, you voted against every appropriations bill. And if you had succeeded in killing the bill, the teachers would not have gotten a raise. Highways would not have gotten any money. Nobody would have gotten anything. So don't suggest that you supported the teachers. You simply have them. That's your record. Let me say, you're here trying to say that you're going to try to bring us together after you elected and you end your, you end your statement by accusing me of, of organizing voter registration drives in racially, in racially designated areas when that simply is not so. I had nothing to do with that. Those people were motivated to register on their own and I admire them for it. But the fact of the matter is as many whites as, black vo uh, as blacks voted. I'm not accusing you of organizing the whites or the blacks. And for you to suggest that I've been to black people saying they ought to vote for me because of who I am, what should I say to them? They should vote for me because of who you are? I think they'd probably vote for anybody because of who you are. My point is they should vote for me because of my record of concern for education, for jobs, for caring for people, for being compassionate. I have spent my whole life trying to bring people together. I don't build bar barricades between people. I build bridges. All right. A, qu a question to Mr. Duke from Barry Irwin. Mr. Duke, you have proposed doing away with affirmative action programs, yet the federal government requires affirmative action in uh, certain programs, in, in programs where they allow uh, grants to such state agencies as the Highway Department, where large grants are given. The question is, how can you do away or eliminate affirmative action programs in Louisiana without costing the state huge amounts of money? First off, many affirmative action programs aren't linked to the federal government. There's much racial discrimination going on against people in the state and state government in private industry, uh, there's a lot of quota systems going on, and I believe in the Constitution of the United States. I believe that you should be judged by your merits and your talents and not your race. I don't believe in preferential treatment on the basis of race. I think quotas are wrong. Now, as far as the highway funds, when I had a bill that would outlaw set-asides, I had a rider in it that if it came to the point that our highway funds would be threatened, that the bill would not go into effect. Let's make the federal government clear on that issue. And I think it's time for the people of the state of Louisiana to stand up for our rights, go into the federal courts. I think the Constitution provides for equal rights for all people. And I think it's about time we go into the courts. We have a new Supreme Court justice, Clarence Thomas, I think is a great man. We have a better Supreme Court now. I think there'll be more conservative positions coming down for the Supreme Court. So I think it's time for the state of Louisiana to challenge some of these decisions and stand up for true equal rights for all. Not the NAACP programs, that discriminate against individuals, but truly equal rights for everyone in the state. We also have programs right now in Louisiana where you take a test for a job and they'll change your test score on the basis of your race rather than what you actually scored in the test. That's wrong and immoral. I believe in equal rights for everyone. I believe human rights must be for everyone in the state and I think it's about time the state takes an active role in defending the rights of its citizens. And Mr. Edwards, your response. Well, it's really not fair to say that about changing test scores on the basis of race. Uh, veterans used to get preferences, may still do it, I don't know. But you're right, Barry. Uh, we are required by federal law, and neither Mr. Duke nor I nor the legislature is going to be able to take a $300 million loss of federal funds by doing away with affirmative action in the highway department, which is the only department of the state that it's really a significant problem. Let me also say that most of the minority contracts that go in the highway department under this federally mandated program go to firms that are owned by women. And I certainly don't think Mr. Duke is suggesting that women should be set aside or not given some opportunity to participate in the bidding process. But the bottom line is whether you like it or not, and I would prefer not to be imp have it imposed upon me also, but uh, we don't run the federal government. We need to cooperate with the federal government. We want a 50 states, and we can't afford to summarily and unilaterally make a decision like that which would cost us $300 million in highway funds as bad as we need the funds for our highways, as bad as we need the jobs on the highways, as bad as we need the sale of goods and services and supplies to highway contractors that build our highways. My point is simply this. It is not really that serious a problem when you consider that we are getting this money from the federal government and we are following the federal mandates just as every other state in the nation is doing. And it's giving an opportunity for women in particular because they are the major beneficiaries of the program within the and highway department. Your time has expired. Thank you.
We have two-minute closing responses now from the candidates. First, Mr. Edwards. <laughs> My opponent likes to jump on me because in 1984 we raised taxes. We inherited a deficit. We had to address it. It must have been the proper thing to do because in 1990, a long time after I raised taxes, he voted for bills to raise taxes on food and drugs and on utilities. And that's his voting record, House Bill 8. 13. I don't fault him for that because I'm sure it was necessary in order to address the state's financial problems. Teachers needed to be paid, highways needed to be built, social services had to be rendered. But that's not the issue anymore. We can no longer raise taxes. We now have to look at the future of this state and determine what we're going to do about tourism, economic development, the environment, and how we're going to put together diverse groups of our people. We can't take a million people who are in one race and segregate them and say that this is their part of the state and then take the rest and do something else with them. We have to work together. We need to build bridges. We can't build barricades. And one of the things that I'm very proud of is that for 40 years, as a lawyer, as a city councilman, as a state senator, a member of Congress, as governor, I have gone out of my way to be compassionate with people and to work with them. And I'm proud of the fact that I have the education and the training and the experience to meet with presidents of the United States, heads of nations, industrialists, and those who wish to come here to, to develop with us. But at the same time, I'm proud that I can stop and commiserate with a lady in a wheelchair who is scared about her future and doesn't know what's going to happen to her because she has no one to take care of her. I want to be governor again because I think I have the compassion to be concerned about all people. And I think I have the ability and the education and the job training to work with all various groups. I have this great opportunity I've never had before to put together my traditional voting strength with these new people who've come on board with me. We're going to put it in a transition team. We're going to make it work, and it's and going to work in the next expired. four years. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. A closing statement again, Mr. Duke, in two minutes. The bill he refers to is Bill A30. I didn't vote to raise taxes. If the bill would have passed, your sales taxes in the state of Louisiana on food and drugs and other items would have been reduced by one cent. That's hardly a tax increase for Louisiana. That's a heck of a reason to want to be governor. Governor? To want to be governor to resurrect your past or to prove that you're not a crook? That's not good enough. I want to be governor because I can serve the people of the state of Louisiana because I know that we can do better than we have done. I have with me just a small section, a small section of the pardons and commutation of, of sentences of violent murderers and criminals in the state of Louisiana, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Edwin Edwards freed more violent criminals in this state over the last 20 years than all the other governors in this century combined of Louisiana. Pardon after pardon, manslaughter, carnal knowledge with a juvenile, murder, 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 drug dealing, on and on and on. Now, some people say he sold these pardons. I don't know whether he sold them or whether he gave them away. Maybe giving them away is even worse. We've got to protect the people of this state. We've got to stop the violent crime. The innocent people are suffering in Louisiana. I'm so tired of the corruption. I'm tired of the way the state's operated. I'm tired of the endorsements. I want something better for me, for my children, for you for our state. I'm going to stand up and fight for you honestly and openly. And now it's time for you to get behind me as well. Please, let's not go back to what we've had. If you like what's been going on in the state of Louisiana for the last 20 years, go ahead, vote for Edwin Edwards. You'll get more of the same, more environmental destruction. You'll get lower salaries for teachers. You'll get more crime on our streets. Our schools will continue to decline. Ladies and gentlemen, we need a change. Please, Let's make a change in this election, a change to turn Louisiana around, make us more prosperous, and, your time and move toward the future. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Duke and Mr. Edwards. Thank you both.